The World Health Organization announced yesterday that there is a, quote, high risk of biological hazard in Sudan's capital, Khartoum, after one of the warring parties seized a laboratory holding measles and cholera pathogens, as well as other hazardous materials, according to a Reuters report. So this is very disturbing, uh, theoretically at least. Uh, this is exactly the kind of thing we worry about. I remember it, it's similar to a discussion that got really polarized during the Ukraine, uh, ongoing Ukraine conflict. Tulsi Gabbard sounded the alarm about, uh, about bioweapons labs potentially being compromised and how that could be dangerous, and then that got called Russian disinformation, and then I looked into it, and it seemed to be a perfectly legitimate complaint, yeah. perhaps overstated. But look, we're, we just had a pandemic rip through the earth and kill millions of people, and we're a little worried about uh, potential lab outbreaks right now. And I think many of us have questions about, is it safe to house dangerous infectious diseases in places that, for whatever reason, they could break out of. Maybe that reason is because the, 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 the government does not follow proper safety procedures or there's not enough accountability to know whether they're following proper safety protocols. Yeah. Or a theoretically war-torn area where, where a, a, a militia could take it over and release it. I mean, this is, not a, this is not a crazy concern. Pathogens have broken out of labs. So the, it's, it's not a crazy concern. I would say, though, that it can be overstated. So it seems clear that, so, so part of the issue here was that the fighting broke out so quickly and things devolved so quickly that the scientists weren't able to secure the samples. There seems to have been some protocol where they do shut, lock down the samples or destroy those kinds of samples, but in this case, things broke out too quickly. So whether or not there needs to be some kind of policy change that could guard against that, whether there needs to be some kind of kill but button that sends everything up in an incinerator if fighting breaks out, whether or not perhaps these kinds of labs should, shouldn't exist in such unstable regions, those are all legitimate concerns. The kill button malfunctions in the Stephen sure. King classic The Stand, okay. and then 99% of the world dies to the it's, super flu. It's also worth noting, Robbie, <laughs> life that their concern about the samples that have been named so far are cholera and the measles. Measles does spread in an airborne way. Cholera does not. Um, so there's, I think, a limited amount of concern about how that can be weaponized. Also, cholera, regrettably, is relatively common, especially in, in um, less, less uh, developed in terms of infrastructure mm -hmm. regions. There was just a terrible cholera outbreak in Malawi, I think, that killed about 1,200 people. I mean, these kinds of things do happen, and there isn't the same amount of concern, I think, about that that there should be, given a story as compared to a story like this, where it can be sensationalized and kind of linked into COVID in that particular way. So I don't want to downplay it, but I do also don't want to be overly alarmist well, I'm not about trying it. to alarm anyone either, but it just goes to a fundamental question. like. Why hold on to them? Let's destroy these diseases. Why hold on well, to the them diseases, in unsafe conditions? This, this, isn't, this, is a, this isn't a case where anybody has alleged there was gain-of-function research. I mean, remember with COVID, the problem is that they arguably created the, the, right. the disease in the first place. They manipulated it to make it more easily caught by human right. beings to study what would happen if something did mutate and, and, and go through the human population. Or potentially had an encounter with an animal that, would, would, that was unlikely to occur naturally, but they specifically sure. go into a cave and they sure. start picking up bats because they're going to bring them back for scientific experimentation, and then maybe sure. something like COVID happens but, even but, without the But this is a lab where you can go out and get cholera all over the place because a lot of people are still really suffering with that and study it to, make, to, to figure out facts about its transmission and how to keep people from getting sick and dying from it, something that, again, a lot of people do in a lot of places in the world where they don't have access to clean drinking water. So... I mean, I, I guess my pushback to some of the alarmism here isn't it to say that there is definitely a risk profile here and you have to make a risk reward, award, award assessment that might not favor, let's say, gain of function research. But I'm concerned that an instance like this, there's a lab where they're studying a relatively common disease, they're not creating anything new, that the public reaction might be, we shouldn't study this anymore, is concerning. And is that inconsistent with the view that folks have about something like, like let's say, gun ownership, where people will say, well, I have legally obtained my gun, I'm a responsible gun owner, X, Y, and Z that happened elsewhere is not my fault. Well, legally obtained guns are sometimes stolen 
often stolen or are trafficked in various ways. You know, are, are you or should we say no one's ever allowed to have a gun because some bad actors mishandle their guns? or you know, break, break some rule unknowingly with their gun, or legally buy a gun and use it to shoot up a bank the way um, that young man did just a few weeks ago? Well, I certainly wouldn't make that argument. Lots and lots and lots of Democratic-leaning people make exactly that argument, that it should be the liability for even selling the guns should be prohibitive. All of those kinds of things. I, I like those. Okay. I, I think there's an interesting well, conversation to be had about manufacturer liability in that space and whether or not that would create safety mechanisms, mm -hmm. markets, incentives, and safety mechanisms. Why protect gun manufacturers uh, in a way that other manufacturers of dangerous materials aren't protected? But that's that's a, a separate right. argument. So I agree with you. Obviously, a lot of you know liberals and, and others make those kinds of arguments. But I'm pointing to an inconsistency where. Like it or not, for whatever reason, a lot of the um, uh, crit critics of gain-of-function research happen to be right-leaning. And people who are mm -hmm. more gun advocates also happen to be right-leaning. And there is, I think, a different assessment of the risk-reward profile there that leads people to say, well, we shouldn't do any scientific research because of COVID, but the risks ap apparent in gun no, ownership do, are treated in the same way. We should do scientific research. Is this specific research worth the risk is the question. And, and again, yeah. now we're talking about the gain of function. Yeah. Maybe holding on to cholera in a laboratory is not really risky at all, given it's fairly widespread, although still holding it in a laboratory in an area that <laughs> could potentially be overrun by civil war and strife still seems not a good idea to me. Maybe, you know, house that somewhere else. But uh, Dr. Fauci actually has reacted to this. Definitely want to play that. This morning he said he's not totally on board with the ending of the national COVID emergency. Let's watch. We changed going forward. You know, the public health emergency is actually ending in about two weeks. Do you think it's the right time for that to end? You know, there's obviously debate about that, but I think in general we really need to move forward so long as we don't leave a big gap and being able to take care of the people who may not have available to them now the things that were very, very important to them at the time that we had all of the issues that were related to the emergency. We want to be able to have a, some sort of a safety net for them to be able to get drugs and to be able to get vaccines so those things don't fall between the cracks. If we take care of that, I think that it's important to move forward I mean, everybody wants this outbreak behind us. We want to make sure we don't just forget about it completely because we still have about 150 deaths per day and there's still a lot of virus out there. So we can't just completely forget about it. We got to continue to pay attention to it. Yeah. Sorry, that was Fauci uh, reacting to the end of the COVID emergency, not specifically to the uh, Sudan situation. Uh, my mistake on that. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. That's kind of a soft critique of Biden and the choice to um, end some of the COVID era protections by bringing it into the COVID emergency. Uh, Fauci saying there, and a statement that I think is relatively uncontroversial, that people who still want to avail themselves uh, of protections against uh, the worst consequences of the vaccine, uh, of the virus, rather, hospitalization and the like, should still be able to access vaccines, boosters, whatever prophylactics become available. And there's some concern that ending, you know, the, the, the government saying COVID is over and taking a step away will make some people who are still at risk and the 150 people who, a day who are still dying increasingly vulnerable. Is that especially controversial? Well, I, I, no, I don't know. I think most people feel like the end should have come a lot earlier, or, or in fact, Biden said it months ago that the pandem pandemic is effectively over, but some policies remain in place, including ludicrously the inability for people to travel to the U.S. Mm -hmm. unless they're vaccinated. Um, I, I've said again and again and again, I, I, I can't believe, I mean, I, I can believe it, but it's still shocking to me uh, that college campuses, et cetera, are still requiring the bivalent booster for their student populations. So, but, but it is uh, worth reflecting on that in, in many, many, many ways, in, in fact, in most respects, the pandemic does certainly feel over to me. Doesn't it feel over to you? 
Well, specifically, Fauci was referencing the fact that 150 people still die every day. And potentially some of those might be people who are not vaccinated. And we have to ask the question why. You know, people who are hospitalized dis are disproportionately not vaccinated. The effect, you know, the, the thing that the vaccine really did do was diminish the most extreme symptoms of uh, a COVID uh, diagnosis. So to the extent that there are people who want to avoid that outcome, and as the vaccines wear off, who knows how long that will take? We're still in the trial and error zone of knowing how long lasting some of these interventions are. You know, the question is whether or not the government taking this posture and, and acting on the fact that so many people do want uh, COVID behind them is going to prevent them from offering the kinds of things that would help keep, the, uh, help keep people from being hospitalized and getting sick when they, in fact, opt for them. So, you know, I'm I completely concede all of the issues, all of the concerns about mandates. But are we so exclusively talking about mandates that we're going to basically let the government rip out all of the protections that we were being offered? Because we're, there's no room in the conversation to talk about, well, should 15 million people have been kicked off Medicaid? Mm -hmm. Should we have to pay for vaccines out of pocket if there is another wave and people don't want to be hospitalized and relatively young, uh, healthy people are being hospitalized and dying like we're happening in the early days of COVID? And are our frustrations with how the CDC handled this putting us in a mental space that prevents us from asking what the government actually still does owe to protect the population in public health emergencies going forward. I think, I think that's a legitimate question that Fauci is uh, bringing up there. Mm. Well, we will have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.